Point time. Can we yield back? For what purpose, gentleman from Massachusetts, rise? No kidding. The gentleman moves to strike the requisite number of words and is recognized for five minutes. Um, and um, and I do so uh, really just to ensure that. We understand that this is a huge 2.5 million acre park, and, um, and that what we're talking about here is a 158 mile long river in the middle of this park. Okay? So we're talking about a huge area. I've got to you. Yeah. The, the river's 2,800 miles long. The what? The river is 2,800 miles long. This part this of one it, little one little tiny section. This the, is a river is five miles right. away, 2,800 miles right. long, third largest river in the United States of America. Right. That carries the, transportation. Right. I thank the I'll reclaim my time to say that the 158 mile area is the is the portion of the river inside of the park, the 2.5 million acre park, and so what the gentleman is suggesting, it seems to me, that he believes and I understand that, that the National Park Service or an individual officer made a mistake here, that they abused their authority. And I understand that. Uh, you know, when I, was a, when I was a boy, my favorite television show when I was 9, 10, 11 was Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. And he had his faithful horse Rex and his dog Yukon King. And each week, you know, at 5 o'clock on Friday, he would come out to patrol the Yukon. Uh, and he worked for the Canadian Royal Mounties. Now, I would like to think that if he ever made a mistake, if he ever overstepped his boundaries, if he ever improperly treated anyone that he was in the process of arresting, that the punishment would be that the Mounties could never again, any of them, go into the Yukon. Because that would seem to me to kind of result in a less fully uh, 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 implemented set of law enforcement principles in that area. So what we're learning here is that the punishment to the National Park Service for potentially something that one or two officers engaged in is that none of them can continue their policing, which the Coast Guard says they need. In fact, this is in many ways such a remote part of the Yukon that the Coast, that the Coast Guard right now relies upon the Park Service police to police these areas. And the answer which we're getting from the gentleman from Alaska is, and I understand the example that he's trying to make of, uh, of, uh, of this one particular incident, um, is that uh, you, you're using this as something I think that is illustrative, okay, and perhaps just to highlight it. But I don't think you really want the result of a reduction in the overall enforcement of the laws inside of the park, because that's what would result here. So the partnership between the Coast Guard and uh, the Park Service on this river, and all that abuts the river, uh, is something that is seamless. It's worked for generations, and it's something that everyone seems to support. So I guess what I would say to you is that perhaps you could target this a little bit more narrowly, but not to punish the entire Park Service and every officer in the Park Service. It's like every person who works there uh, is now going to suffer as a result of this amendment, and I don't think that's what you intend. Uh, and so I guess what I would say is that I would support the amendment uh, of the gentleman from Washington State. Um, it will, uh, I think, make it possible for us to come back and maybe take another look at it, but not in a way that undermines this partnership that has existed uh, up there uh, for a generation which has worked. And if there's an exception, by the way, if there's an exception in any police department, uh, uh, that person who did something wrong should not lead to the, that entire police department never again being able to uh, enforce the laws. That would, be, that would be an indictment of everyone. Okay, So I just think that to the extent to which uh, the Dix Amendment um, seeks to uh, repeal the uh, or, or, or delete the uh, provision which is in the bill, it doesn't mean that you can't come back and talk about something that might be more specific. I'd be glad to yield to the gentleman from uh, Washington State here is we're talking about safety we're talking about inspecting boats that may be unsafe and I think that is an important issue that we should not deal with in a in a in a across the board way here in this bill and I think the gentleman from Alaska has made his point I think he should withdraw this a bit I mean
he, I think he should uh, support our amendment to strike, to strike this in order to make sure that the people of Alaska are protected. If I know he cares about them. If I can I reclaim back. my time. The, 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 the effect of this amendment could be because the Coast Guard relies upon the Park Service is that we could wind up with an entire area without any law enforcement. Because God does not reach that area, the Park Service is there. If you take out the Park Service, it becomes much more of uh, a dangerous place for everyone. And I don't think that's really what the gentleman intends. Time the gentleman's expired. For what purpose, gentleman from Idaho, rise? <laughs> Move to strike the last word. Gentleman's recognized for five minutes. It's been a fascinating debate to, uh, to uh, listen to as the gentleman from Massachusetts and the gentleman from Virginia tell the gentleman from Alaska how it works in Alaska. I will tell you that he knows more about Alaska than any of you ever thought of knowing. The problem is you say you're trying to save Mr. Young from himself by offering this amendment. We're trying to save the Park Service from itself and the actions that it's taken. Now, logically, your argument says, gee, if people had problems in their own areas, then you might see other amendments come like this and would be setting a precedent. Exactly. If we can't have oversight about what goes on and what the Park Service does, why are we even here? You heard the story that I won't repeat that what happened to this gentleman, Mr. Wild, uh, on the river. We all agree that it's a problem. And in fact, when the Park Service tells the gentleman, stops him in the middle of the river and tells him to shut down his boat, to shut down his motors, and as they testified in court, they refused to shut down theirs because it was unsafe, who's being protected? That's the point. Safety inspections of these, let me finish, safety inspections of these boats will not stop. The statutory authority is given to the Coast Guard. That's who has the statutory authority, not the Park Service. Now, wait and a minute. That's the debate the that's from going Alaska on here. Said it was the state this, of Alaska. Language, this language is intended to only limit the Park Service's authority to engage in motor safety checks on the Yukon River within the Yukon Charlie National Preserve. Only non ocean navigable waterway within Alaska's national parks. It's important to note that this language will not have any effect on the ability of the Coast Guard to conduct their statutorily, statutorily granted powers of conducting motor safety checks. It is intended to avoid similar incidents between the Park Service and the public. And yes, when Mr. Young brought this up originally, the manager of the Park Service could have said, you're right, there is a problem there and I'll get rid of these people. They didn't do that. It took this to bring about the actions that, the, that have finally occurred that they've been dismissed from that region. We're, we're trying to prevent the Park Service from harming themselves, and I'd be happy to yield, the, yield to the gentleman from Texas. Or uh, Texas. Texas. Gentleman from Alaska. Well, we're just twice Another as big, big as Texas, two and a half times. But just keep in mind, the Coast Guard has this authority. As soon as this happened, I called the Coast Guard because the Park Service said the Coast Guard had granted them that authority. The Coast Guard, no way. That's our authority. And then secondly, they said registration. Only the state has the right to register a boat. That's the same thing in your state, not any federal agency. As far as only 130 miles, and remember, this is the highway of Alaska. The highway of Alaska has been used for hundreds of years. And we got along very well without any park service all these years. All these years. And by the way, I don't think there was a drowning because of a boat accident on that section of the river in history. So why, all of a sudden, you want me to protect the Alaskan people that do not like this, I do not understand. I agree, very frankly, I think you're meddling. You're meddling in something that the state has a great interest in, that has said before, this is our waterway. We have a right to progress it from Canada through Alaska all the way down to the Bering Sea. And to have a agency that the taxpayer pays for, by the way, had had an illegal boat. The boat they were driving was overpowered according to the Coast Guard. So just leave this in the bill as it should. I'm asking all my colleagues to think about this very carefully. Do you want an agency that does not respect the rights of individuals because they work for the government, does not respect the rights of history? I don't think you do. So I'm asking the amendment to be defeated and asking for the, my colleagues to understand this is a big issue in my state. It's very, very important, not only to me, but to my people, the people of the state of Alaska that have been using that river for centuries. So let's just leave it in the bill, and I yield back the balance back to the gentleman.
I'd be happy to yield the gentleman from Washington. You, you know, we have people in the law enforcement area who make mistakes.